Welcome to Inside Science TV. The sun is a hot topic again. In 2003 and 2004, solar flares disabled several satellites orbiting Earth and affected airplane navigation systems. Now the sun is returning to a period of intense activity. So the sun goes through typically an 11-year cycle uh, of low activity and high activity. Uh, currently, we're coming out of a period of very low activity that ended about a year or so ago. And so we're heading up towards the solar maximum period. Charged particles on the sun's surface build up energy, generating huge magnetic loops. When the loops break, these particles are released, creating a solar flare that can reach the Earth. But predicting when they will occur isn't easy. So currently, the, the prediction schemes are basically a warning system, maybe an hour or so uh, to a couple days in advance, that a solar flare has occurred that might actually have some effect here on the Earth. Solar flares can travel up to 4 million miles per hour, carrying energy equivalent to millions of nuclear bombs. No wonder when solar storms hit Earth's atmosphere, they can cause major problems. These effects can range from problems on satellites. We can also see problems in our electric grid here on the Earth's surface. And in addition to that, we can have outages on radio communication and navigation systems. Scientists develop a space weather forecast by studying the surface of the sun, looking for dark splotches of magnetic energy called sunspots. More sunspots mean more solar flares. Scientists rely on satellites to spot them. There are only a few satellites that are actually currently looking at the sun and able to warn us when one of these solar flares is occurring. The distant sun can sometimes make big impacts here on Earth. I'm Josh Lebowitz reporting. Inside Science TV. If you enjoyed this edition, follow us on Facebook, Twitter, or YouTube. Two new science stories every week. Powered by the American Institute of Physics.